Hi, this is Weldon McMath with McMath Realty in Phoenix, Arizona. Today we're talking about the most common ways that owners violate Arizona landlord-tenant law without knowing it. An owner of a rental property decided he would be his own pool service. So every week he went to the rental property and uh, serviced the pool and at the same time looked around the property to see in what ways the tenants might be violating their lease, like uh, dog feces in the backyard or uh, garbage here and there or, or other things. You know, the end of that tenancy came. It was time to re refund the deposits to the tenant and there was a dispute over what the landlord was charging them. Hmm. Strange that the tenants would bring up that the owner violated landlord-tenant law every week by failing to give the required 48 hours notice before visiting the property. Another owner decided that he wanted to charge the tenants for painting his entire house. He claimed that no one had lived in that house prior to the tenants, forgetting that his parents had lived there for a year prior to the tenants, and so some of the wear and tear on the paint was from them. Uh, he also lost in court. Another thing that uh, landlords tend to do in regard to deposits is a failure to itemize correctly the expenses that should be charged to the tenant. One landlord saw that there was a wall that was damaged by the tenant. He estimated it would cost $150 maybe to repaint that one wall, but he wanted to have his whole house painted. So, I don't know, the bill was $1,300, $1,400, and he just wrote on the bill, charged tenant $150. When the tenant took him to court, do you think that flew with the judge? <laughs> no, it didn't, because it wasn't an itemized specific invoice that was reimbursing the owner for tenant damages. There's one other way in which owners can violate, not laws, but the codes of cities regarding pool safety. Many owners don't even think about the fact that their houses may not meet pool safety codes, but believe me, if a child ever drowns in that pool, they will inherit a tremendous liability. I encourage all owners with pools on properties to have their properties inspected by a reputable company and have something in their files showing that their house met the pool safety codes or that they performed whatever work was necessary to bring their house up to that code. There's a lot of other things we could talk about, but these are some of the most common things that owners tend to do at, that break landlord-tenant law. Thanks for listening today.